everybody and welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. We're so happy to see you today. I'm Wendy. And I'm Elka. And you know what? We try to bring some new things to you each and every week. And this week we know there's some problem areas in the garden. We all have them. The shady areas. And we thought we'd bring a little something to the table today about how to fix those areas where I hear a lot of people say things won't grow. Well, exactly. we know they will. We, we know there are wonderful plants in the garden. For the garden that will grow and bloom beautifully and actually produce blooms, right? Okay. Exactly. I think it's kind of a myth that people uh, think that you cannot grow anything in the shade yeah. and that's why we felt the importance of actually having a show and talking about uh, some beautiful plants and not just uh, you know like not green, dark, green, green, yes, green uh, exactly. plants, even some flowering plants and so uh, I think we should just get into it Absolutely. and a little bit about them. Well, you know, the single most important thing that I would like to bring up today about planting in the shade is don't leave them alone. You need to care for brand new plants that you're going to put in shady areas almost more than anything else, anything other, any other area in the garden you're planting for. And the reason being, uh, very simple, if it's in the shade, it's competing with something else that's drawing all the moisture away and the nutrients in the soil, big trees, small trees, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So shady areas have that particular issue with them. So single most important thing, when you plant them, make sure you give them lots of tender loving care that first year. And we send most of our plants for the shade, not all of them, but some of them, in uh, bare root form. Yes. And those need to be soaked. And I think that we usually do it for about an hour. I, yeah, I find that yeah, works best yeah. for me. Uh, and and of, of course, if you have a very dry, uh, drought or a very dry area, make sure yeah, that you help the soil a little bit, oh, amend it, amend with, it. Yeah, with some uh, compost, uh, some peat moss, some sand, just make sure the soil, mm -hmm. soil is uh, well t uh, taken care of, because that is you know, f the secret for every well taken care of plant. Absolutely true. But um, a real good secret is really, you know, remember you, you buy a new house or you see that now in all these new developments, a lot of houses are very, very close together. Absolutely. And you see that little pathway between the two houses and you think, okay, you know, that's basically just <laughs> the gravel What's pathway. What's there? Yeah, it's the gravel pathway to get to the back of the house. Yeah. But um, all, even those areas are very easy to take care of. Uh, you take the containers. And what I like on containers is you can create interest. Uh, you use different kinds of colored con containers, oh, different uh, sizes and heights of mm -hmm. containers. So you make groupings, um, you know, maybe two or three together, and then you have a little space and you make another group. So you create interest there. So you don't have to just uh, have a whole line along the house just with, you know, one plant next to the, each other. So the interest comes through the container and, of course, oh. through, the, through the plants. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have quite a lot of room in my yard, so that's not my problem. But, I, boy, I can just see a... a bright, beautiful pink container filled with astilbes or yeah. bleeding hearts. That's wonderful. Great idea. Yeah. I like talking it too. Talking about astilbes. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And I'd love to talk about the astilbe. Mm -hmm. The astilbe actually have not been in, in favor and probably just about 50 years now is when they were recently brought to the market and really were beautiful. There was a wonderful man named George Arends and he actually bred over 75 new varieties wow. from Germany mm -hmm. and he w worked for 50 years tirelessly bringing us the most beautiful, beautiful astilbes. And if it wasn't for him, they just wouldn't be on the open market today as, as prolific as they are. And of course, about 25 years ago, the Dutch became involved in that industry and they took it even to that uh, newer level creating astilbes that where they last longer, they're more fragrant, mm -hmm. and they're a little hardier too, which is a really great thing. So I, as you can tell, love astilbes. <laughs> they are one of my favorite. And in the garden, they add such interest. Yeah. I have them in sort of partial shade and almost full shade. And I find in the full shade that they tend to not be as bright because the, yeah, the color you, does... Usually it's like that. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah well, the color is not as, 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 as strong. strong. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Because they, I, I sort of wondered about that. In, I don't have them full shade because I find if I do, they tend, or pardon me, full sun. I've got a real problem with that. Mm -hmm. In the full sun, basically what happens is they dry up a bit too quickly. Yeah. And even though they're wonderful winter interest, even as a seed head, you want to have that fresh color in your shady areas for a little bit longer. So my, one of my favorites is the beautiful burgundy red, and it's the Astilbe Arensii, named after George Arens, the German fellow that did all that breeding, mm -hmm. and it is beautiful. The plumes are stunning. I've got one in my backyard in a container in a very shady area, and then I've got sort of a little zen area in my front yard, and I've got them there. And they've got beautiful green foliage. It's really cut 
Uh, I kind of like that yep. too. Yep. And they've got these tall plumes, bright burgundy red. And in the shade, I can tell you it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're going to talk about a shorter one. Yes, exa exactly. Um, I was looking through those uh, Astelpi, and one of the really cute ones is it's called a, a Unique Lilac. Mm -hmm. And what, what I really like on it, it's a small one because yeah. we do have a lot of people who don't have the, the huge acreage spaces to work with. So in containers or even just the balcony, it's a smaller container. Yes, you have to make sure you water them a little bit more because containers, small containers just dry out faster mm -hmm. and point. maybe to to topple over when it's windy so we'll always consider those things but it's the height of that thing it's very it's very cute it's shorter and it's fragrant oh, very light wow. fragrant but that's not very known for us still be so I really yeah. like that I, lo I love it when they come out with new stuff and and uh, you know so you, have, you have a small space you have it close to your sitting area and you get that little nice light uh, fragrance and of course they come in different colors too there's pinks there's the bright red there's some beautiful and it's still be Deutschland mm -hmm. is white oh that really stands out in those shady areas as well and so, they have a blue moss and this one is uh, quite a heavy blue moss yeah well oh, that's mm -hmm. really good too so you're gonna get lots of flowers yeah they yeah. could be cut I think too couldn't they yeah absolutely yeah. and quite frankly uh, at the end of the season if you don't cut them they turn brown mm -hmm. and they stay like that all winter long unless you of course you have them under six feet of snow <laughs> that <laughs> could happen gonna be. too but uh, uh, you know that uh, if you have a, a protected area uh, you can actually leave those little things for the birds to oh that's great the birds love the seeds mm -hmm. I have seen them often on those little plants yeah. afterwards that's but let's move to the next one I mean okay, I, which I, one? I can't, can't <laughs> do uh, the bleeding heart mm -hmm. bleeding heart is also the dicentra yes. this is one that I just love I have it at the front door it's a little bit of a woodsy area it's kind of dark yeah, dark mm -hmm. typical wood area um, but it's it's one of those plants it dies completely back in the winter and then you go to work one day in the spring and when you come home there's this bush <laughs> at least it seems like that because it grows very very fast yes. uh, it comes out it's, it's like a crowdy kind of um, uh, foliage yes, and it right. just kind of pops out of nowhere and some of those varieties are, are just very bright in color too so we'll talk about that one for sure I absolutely love gold heart and I think I got those about three years ago and they actually come up so quickly as Elka said they I go to work in the morning I come back and they're huge <laughs> right now they're about this tall they start off all bunched up and they're lime green so dicentra gold heart bright pink flowers and mine lasts quite a bit longer because it's in an area that's quite cool it doesn't get very warm mm -hmm. so there's no wind in that area because there's trees protecting it and it's very cool and that contrast of that limey yellow green with those bright pink flowers fantastic yeah they are also deer resistant oh. at least yeah you know like I don't have that one problem yeah, in yard, but I do have others. But you know, it's, it's definitely uh, an, an area. You have to make sure you give them a lot of room. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have to move them uh, or divide them or you know, just kind of uh, take them to a new spot, do that in the spring, in the early spring or in the fall. I personally like to do it in the fall I totally because agree. I think if you disturb them in the spring, you might set yourself back for a little. Yeah. You know, oh, that's a really good point. You know. So the other one of the uh, Dicentra, that, which I love, and everybody knows that I love white flowers, uh, this is the one, it's called Dicentra Spectabilis Alba. And Alba is the name for white, and I love white. And <laughs> white do. is, uh, it, and also because I can use it as a cut flower. Yeah. It's, they are really, all, uh, all of the Dicentras work very well as a cut flower, and of course the white. You yeah, can't go wrong, exactly. that's right. Exactly. <laughs> and if for someone who can't decide, we have actually take that, taken that decision-making oh, yeah. process out for you. Mm -hmm. We have a collection that we're offering with the Vancouver Sun and Steve Weissel. So we've gotten together and chosen some really beautiful shade loving plants. Yes. And oh my gosh, Brunera Jack Frost is the one that's highlighted on this beautiful cover right here. And it is, what I love about it is that it's silver. It's not white, it's silver. It produces tiny little blue flowers in the early spring that look like forget-me-nots and it is pretty stunning under the trees. It yeah. really does stand out. You know, we were talking to, to Steve about this collection. We said we have to make sure this is not the run-of-the-mill collection. Mm -hmm. We want to do something very special. Uh, you know, he's he's the garden writer for the Vancouver Sun for 20 plus years. Uh, he knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. And so we said, okay, let's look into it. And we found, uh, of course, one of the, the drinking good. It's called uh, oh, Drinking Gourd. Oh, Abiqua Drinking Gourd. Yeah, that's a, a host of the year mm -hmm. 2014. A beautiful one. It has quite nice um, almost bluish oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, shade kind of uh, flowers and they uh, uh, sorry um, uh, leaves, leaves yeah. yes and they almost look like a little bowl like oh, they, they curl up gosh. on the side it's very uh, very unique yes. absolutely so we said okay make sure you don't concentrate just on the basic varieties but on something special and I think we really 
uh, got got that done. Yeah, because there's lots of hostas too. I absolutely. think in the collection. Mm -hmm. I love the blue and white, or the bluey green with the white. I think it's called Barbara Ann, mm -hmm. and that's one of my absolute mm -hmm. favorites. Yeah. So it's going to be a great collection for any shady area in your garden. And I the best part is it's on sale again. <laughs> uh, the, the regular price is forty six ninety five. Uh, and we offer it for twenty nine ninety five. Oh, I mean, that's pretty seriously, the, yeah. And and you can cover a lot of areas. You can make your containers, and it, yeah. it's a good start. It's for the beginner, and it's also for the person yeah. who just uh, you know loves gardening, has a lot of them already, and wants just a great deal. And there's nine plants or nine bare roots in there. Mm -hmm. So remember to soak those bare roots to make sure you look after these beautiful bare roots for the first year as they grow and flourish in your garden and then you'll have them for years and years to come. Exactly. So what question are we going to ask the lovely mm. audience members today? I think mm. we should ask you something that we mentioned in this show. Mm -hmm. What is the single most important thing to remember when you plant a shade garden? Ah, so we that's talked good. about that. It's somewhere hidden in our show here. I think we really so, talked about it, so hopefully they won't exactly. forget that. It's very so, important. And the best thing is, if you answer that question right, you get into the draw, and we will send two shade collections to, to the yeah. two winners. So there will be two winners, one collection each, and uh, as you know, it's a value of almost $50, so it's a really good thing. We said this time we want to do something very, yeah, special very special because people have prob problems with shade gardens and they shouldn't, and we want to want you to try it. And that's why we said, let's get it out, uh, you know, send your answer to, to Garden Club <laughs> at botanis.com, and we're going to pick two lucky winners, and you're going to receive one of these shade gardens each. And we want to thank you so much for listening today, for watching us, and we hope that you're going to find a little shady area in your garden that will no longer be all alone the there. Zone. That's exactly. right. It's going to be your go-to zone, your little zen place where you're going to go read a book and stay out of the sun for the summertime. Thank you again for watching today. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all your notes and letters coming in. We love hearing from you. See you next time. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>